Ja. Oh my God. Yeah. All right. Let's look at what's going on here. This is going to be a little puzzle because I'm confident that you can solve this puzzle. All right. Situation is like this. What's different? Public key. What was it before? Private key. Remember those guys with the briefcase and the huge matrix in it? That matrix was a private key, right? You need to know that to encode it and decode it. That is not public in now. So they have to exchange it, they have to meet it. And here, if, what if they can't meet it, uh, each other? And here's an idea. All right, Bob is announcing the following. Here's a public information. You can use that to send me an information. So Bob has two, uh, these private keys. Nobody knows this one. Bob has this large prime, right? It's like 3,000 digit long prime. Q is another. 5,000 digit long prime number is to a prime number. And whatever this F is, is going to be an exponent. right? And the world does not know these three things. Now Bob multiplies P and Q and call that, you know, simplify. And there's a few thousand digit number or 10,000 digit number. N, you publish it. The world knows what N is now. And he announced this E. We don't know what that is, but it's going to be an exponent in our modular congruence calculation. So Bob published this, this thing. So I, I give you N and E, and this is how you're going to send me a message. The world knows N and E. Now, Ellis, uh, instruction is the following. Ellis says it's private message, X going from 1 through N. Message is encoded into one of the number, 1 through N in here, right? So no one knows what X is. Only Ellis knows the private message. How are you going to send it? Alice, take that and raise it to the eth power, right? E is usually a large number, but definitely less than n. Now you reduce that to number and mod n. That's the instruction. Okay? Raise it to e. How do you raise that to the eth power if it's a really large number? What method do we use? Repeated squaring method is really fast. You get this number. And Ellis sends this message over the internet. Now, whole world sees it. They have N, they have E, they have Y. And mathematicians claim that getting X will take five years, 10 years using big computers. So how do you attack it? Only known, and there's no good way to attack this. You just have to try, okay, X equals one, raise the ETH power. Is it Y? Because everybody knows Y. X equals two, raise the ETH power. Is it Y? If you check all this n trial, you will get that, right? Whatever that x is. But that takes many, many years compared to how fast you can do this one. That was the whole idea. And another thing is that they will never get this p and q. Factoring this large thing takes another few years. And not knowing p and q, figuring out whatever this f is, we don't know, haven't used that in our instruction, that's another difficulty. So figuring out this one, other than just brute force search or statistical attack, there's no good mathematical algorithm to going from public key to get to the private key. So that is the security of the system. No one has figured it out, all right? Quantum computer comes in and then shoo, do it. And then we have to change the method. Right now with the current computing technology, this is considered very secure. So that's that, but the the challenge that I'd like to throw it to you is the last step. Now Bob received Y, right? It has to figure out what X is, but also world knows that we don't know what F is. But what Bob does is that to take that message Y, raise to the fth power, repeat the squaring method, and then the magic is that it's going to spit out X back mod n. Yeah, that's that's the algorithm. So let me write down the final statement here. Final statement says that for whatever x is, if you raise to e times f, right? World knows f, only the the Bob knows this. World knows e, and the Bob only has this um, number f. That's going to be x mod n, right? That's the final thing that we'd like to. This is our course. We've seen this one before. How how big is this e times f ginormous number, right? We've seen that in our test problem. No problem. 
we can cut that down, right? How do you cut that down? Yeah, exactly that. So that's my, my challenge. So I wrote it down and actually see if you can. So, you know, what is what is this F? How Bob figure out um, F? The only thing that is puzzling is this F, right? The world knows P, N and E and this prime number P and Q. What this F is doing is this business. So can you answer that? E is known. You have P and Q. So how does Bob prepares this F? What is the relationship between E and F? Can you state this relationship E and F nicely? As you have trained three quarters of the semester of modular arithmetic. That's your exercise one. Yeah. But you already said that. You just write it down, write it down there. Yeah. What is the relationship between E and F? To, to obtain that, right? Think about exactly the 118. Remember 118? Everybody remembers 118, right? Do you remember 118? That was test problem two. That was largest power, 118. You knocked that down, right? You knocked it down with uh, whatever. So that's exactly this procedure. Yeah. What was that? Um, 10 to the 1210. Oh, it was a 1210. Remember 1210? That was mod 2018. Was that right? No, it wasn't 2018. What was it? Like 1334? Something like that? Yeah. But we were able to knock this one down. Go ahead. E times F is congruent to 1 mod N. Very good, very good. Very good. Negative 1 mod N. Negative 1 mod N. I agree with the one part. It's just this part is not right. Look at it here. No. Try P. What what if what if it is a P prime? Then what is what is this relationship? How does it? So here's the process. I will look at. I'm looking at this large number, right? You're going to divide this one by something, and you only care about remainder, right? And we want this remainder to be 1, because that's what we're looking at here. What is it we're dividing? No, Think about it here. If it is P, what did you divide this one by? P minus 1. P minus 1, right? But the answer is not N minus 1. But what is the correct answer then? This is the secret that if I raise something to that, it's supposed to be 1 mod n, right? Phi of n. Phi of n. Phi of n is right. It's phi of n. If you divide this one by phi of n, then as you can see, a to the e to the f is a to the phi of n raised to the qth power, which is 1, and just leaves you 1 in there, right? Is that right? So I want you to go ahead and attempt one more time after this much of discussion. Write that answer down. What's the answer I'm looking for in here? What is the relationship, modular congruence relationship? E times F is equal to congruent 1 mod what? That's right. You can use P and Q, but it's in the general description. That was the answer. All right? So let me introduce you this new world we just created here. If you were looking at 
this seems like the topic where we want to study this guy, right? A raised to B, right? This whole A lives in what world? Mod N world, right? Is that right? But B lives in what world? Mod Phi N world. This is new level now. You have to get used to it. You're looking at A to the B. You thought it's mod N. There's a new mod hovering over upstairs. Mod N is down there. Up there, mod V N is interplaying each other, right? That's that's the new level now. Isn't that fun? Yes. So it's like duplex modulus, whatever. That <laughs> uh, dual mod dual modular arithmetic. You know, some you create the name. Yeah. All right. Public doesn't know that. That's right. We don't know Vn. How do you find Vn? You have to factor it. That takes years. Only Bob knows how it factors. Because right. To 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 calculate to calculate the answer is P minus one and Q minus one. You got to know P and Q. Just knowing P times Q will you will never get to this one. Public no, pub does not know P and Q. They only know P times Q. That's right. So let me go back to here. The public knows P times Q. They do not know P and Q. Right. But how does it prepare F? Right. He he got to find what is a what is a, a, a fancy name of F. F is what of E modulo Vn inverse. Right. Now, how do you find an inverse if it's like this? What what algorithm? Proof was too too long, right? Yeah, too long. If this were a test like four digit number and you were asked to find the multiplicative inverse, how do you do it? Go back to session one, that's my hint. Yeah. But Zoo's identity, right? But that's a final statement. But how do you how do you get to Pazu's identity? What method gets you to the Pazu's identity? You clean an algorithm. You clean an algorithm. Remember, remember this thing? Yeah, you just keep dividing and you get to the answer pretty quick. That'll tell you what capital F is. So it's a very fast algorithm. Repeated squaring method on finding multiplicative inverse and GCD is a fast algorithm in number theory, right? But factoring. It's very hard to make this one uh, very difficult to decode. That's it. What is this called? Public key crypto system. This is based on difficulty of what? Factoring large number into primes. Okay. Here was the I want you to look at the second part, the magic part in here. What does it say? We apply this this thing when x is relatively prime to n. Why am I saying that? The statement Euler's theorem, right? It is Euler's theorem. It requires x this base number being relatively prime, right? But what does it say here? There's no star in here. No matter what, this is going to be is going to work. So when Ellis choose a message, you don't have to think about relatively prime to n. Just choose anything, raise the e to the f, and you will get this one back. So that's magic, right? That's magic. So only thing you have to consider is that all right, what if n is p and q? If it has p in it, that's the only consideration you have to think about. If it has a q in it, it's zero mod p, right? To zero mod n, so zero goes to zero. That case is easy. So what if this p is in there? So all we have to prove is really okay. If I raise the p to p to the e f, if e f satisfies that relation, e f is congruent to one mod. What is more specific than phi of n here? P mod p minus one times q minus one, right? That's the upstairs. Well, upstairs much less. 
yeah, is congruent to P mod N downstairs, right? We have to prove this. Prove this. No, N is P times Q, right? not P. Yeah, yeah. All right. So how do you prove anything about modular congruence of congruence of composite? Right. What is that map called? Chinese remainder theorem. Go down to that, right? So if it is so, you should be able to see that in the Chinese remainder theorem, right? Try it. So exercise is a number two. Use what map? Going from where to where? ZPQ, right? ZN, correct. Two, ZP cross ZQ, right? Okay, if this is going to be P, and where's the P is going to go? Under this one. P is going to go zero, comma, P, right? That's the class. That's where it's going. All right, now you're looking at P to the EF, right? You have to show this guy goes the same place. Then you show that these two things are equal, congruent in mod PQ. Is that right? Yeah. So that's what you are asked to do and exercise to use this one to prove that. How was it? Does that make sense? How about this part writing EF in that form? Make sense out of it? EF was congruent to 1 mod phi of n, right? So p minus 1, q minus n, here's a quotient. Whatever that is, why did I write fem oscillator theorem here? q minus 1 right there. q minus 1 in mod q is always 1. So there's one there, P. So this map to 0 and P, right? What other thing map to 0 and P? P itself, right? 
but what of this property of a, CR, a CRT method allows you to conclude, all right, that goes to 0 to P, that goes to 0 P, therefore that should be the same. What property of CRT? Injectivity, right? Injectivity of the CRT map allows you to do these two things at the same. What's that? Fact to what? Yeah. That maybe that that's easier. Yeah. If you do that, you have a p there and p to the e f minus one, right? And mod mod phi mod mod n. Why is that? No, the speed to the EF minus 1 must be 0 mod Q. That's what we need to show. Because this has P in it. N is a P times Q, right? If it's congruent to 0 mod P, there's a P. There must be Q in it so that this is congruent to 0 mod P. But that's not necessary condition. Not necessary. Could be zero, but that's only one case. Yeah, yeah. But the Q got to be in there. That is necessary condition. Right, but N is a composite. That's why it's a slightly different. Yeah, if N is N is a prime, either this one is a zero or that one is zero, yes. But if it's a composite, there are more cases kick in. Yeah, right, yeah. Now, because of PQ, P is already there. Q got to be there if it is a zero. So that allows you to, if I can show that, it shows that it's a zero. So you're right, here is a, this is exactly the uh, Fermat's little theorem for Q, which we have used right here in this level. So this is another nice proof that does not use Chinese remainder theorem context. Yeah, thank you, That's a, that works. All right, so let's go back and in here, doesn't matter. Whatever you choose from zero through n, you'll be able to, in, you know, kind of do the inverse. This is inverse map. X raising to the e is one map, right? Raising to the f is the inverse, so it gives you the input back. It's interesting. Um, new kind of inverse map that we're entering here has huge application. So I'm no expert to the crypto crypto system, but I was told that entire our crypto system is based on that. We can exchange messages safely without meeting and exchanging the private key privately. You can exchange information, how to encode and decode pri publicly like this, and all based on this map. It takes a long time to get that PNQ. All right.